Can you introduce yourself? I'm John Clark. I uh, live in New Orleans, Louisiana. I was born in New Orleans uh, in 1945. And uh, I have lived here ever since, although I've spent a lot of time in France and a certain amount of time in India and other places, but I'm still here. How old were you and in what were you involved at the time of Venice 84? Okay, for those who are mathematically challenged, I was born in 1945, so I actually had to calculate this myself. Uh, I think I was 39. And in what were you involved when you went to the conference? Uh, at the time, in 1984, uh, I, I had a group in New Orleans called the New Orleans Social Ecology Group. Uh, a few years before that, I had started a group called the New Orleans Libertarian Alliance. I don't think that was still going. No, that was actually a number of years before that. Uh, I've also been a member of the IWW off and on, so it's possible that I may have been a member that year. I'm not real good at paying dues. How did you know about the gathering and why did you decide to participate? Well, everybody was talking about it, at least people I know. Uh, the word had really gotten around uh, to the circle of people that I work with at that time. so. People knew it was a big deal that something, uh, in fact, we had no idea what a big deal it was, but we knew there was a really significant conference going on in Venice. Uh, so I really wanted to be there. I thought it was a wonderful opportunity to meet many people I had heard about who were doing incredible, amazing things. What is for you the most vivid memory of those days? Well, there are many vivid memories. Uh, one is just uh, the, the size of the auditorium and uh, so many people at the general sessions at the Faculty of Architecture, I believe it was. Uh, also the, the plaza with so many people eating and drinking and listening to music. Uh, uh, that, that, was, that was quite impressive. Uh, so that's part of it. Uh, but also some of the people I met were really amazing. I, I, uh, I met some of the people who became very important to me later on. Um, for instance, uh, all, all of the wonderful Italian friends like Amadeo and Rossella and uh, uh, Nico, um, Paolo, Aurora, uh, Luciano. I could go on, but they're, they're people that I'm so happy that I had a chance to, to meet. Uh, the organizers of the conference, and then other people from uh, around Europe and around the world. Um, I'm, I'm probably getting into uh, another question, but it was, it was really a turning point for me in many ways because uh, it put me in touch with a circle of activists and theorists, particularly in Western Europe. And uh, as a result of that, I ended up going to quite a few conferences and getting involved with groups like uh, the uh, CIRA Centro Studi Libertari and uh, ACL in Dion and other groups and uh, in fact have done a number of books with some of these groups and certainly met with people over a period of uh, quite a few decades now. Are there any other lasting implications for you of Venice 84? Um, well, rather than lasting implications. Uh, let me just, since I mentioned some of those people, there were, there were a couple of, I, I remember the one thing that I actually, re, uh, that affected me most, strangely enough. Uh, I met an old anarchist named David Coven, who had been, uh, I believe, an electrician from New York, and he moved to the De Bay Area uh, got really involved in activities there, helped start a school called the Walden School. He talked to me a lot about his life and the life of his friends. Uh, and he said something that I've always remembered. At a certain point, he said, um, we deserve the best. We were talking about anarchism and what it means, and people were talking a lot about theory and about vast social transformations. And I was kind of amazed 
that he summed everything up by, we deserve the best. And I, I think by we, he meant everybody. That we're trying to create a world in which we have the best of all things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that he was so affirmative and seemed to love life so much and love people so much uh, made him a kind of uh, really profound influence for me from that point on. And I, I think maybe I was beginning to go in another direction on a lot of things and, and that contributed to it. Uh, although I hate to single out one or two things because there were just so many powerful experiences and just the, the ambiance and the, the excitement of being there and spending days in meetings and then hanging out at restaurants and in the plaza at night and having conversations that went on until very late. I mean, this is really an extraordinary experience. And I'm so grateful uh, to all of the people uh, in Milano and, and elsewhere who, who, who put out such a great effort to, to create this experience.